everyone, this is Anka Metcalf with uh, TradeOutloud.com. Welcome to the futures uh, outlook for the week starting with October uh, 8th. And uh, let's begin with the Imini Dow Industrial Average, and we're going to start with the weekly chart. This week, we made a new high of 26,966, a bit shy of 27,000. Uh, but also this week was a major achievement for the Dow because it managed to break this prior pivot high that was set on, on January 29th. So we did break above that natural reaction, sell, and we're left with a doji onto the weekly chart. A lot of indecision. Uh, we just tapped into last week's low into the 320 zone, and so far not a lot of price action that can literally tell us what's in store for this for this week obviously things are going to be a little bit more clear once we open if we break through the 320 low we may come in to revisit the 10 exponential into the 26080 zone and even a steeper correction into the 25860 all the way into this prior pivot high right here setting a new shelf of support for price let's move on to the daily charts Daily charts revisit of prior week's lows at the 350 zone and also a revisit of the 20 SMA. Obviously, we're left with a quite a considerable swing here. So for the low into the 26, uh, 320 with a high into the 740 zone. Obviously, if we break above this high uh, in tomorrow's trading session, 26, 7, uh, 36, we may have a projection higher back into the 27,000. If we break today, if we break uh, Friday's low, this is not going to go look and we're going to be looking for more short bias that may take the price lower into uh, 220, uh, 26,050 and all the way into the uh 25 26,000. I would say let's let's round it up into the 26,000. We also have support and we also we also have support from prior price action. We also have the 50 SMA into that area as well. So things are going to as long as the price is going to meander between Friday's low and Friday's high, we're going to remain sideways. So day trading is going to be a little bit more to the sloppy side, more scalping opportunities for tomorrow's trading session if we don't break above Friday's high or Friday's low. Friday's low may create another leg down, like I said, possibly into the 26,000. Uh, and that would be a good rotation a good rotation point for, um, for price to uh, come back up again. Let's not forget that we're beginning earnings season this uh, week. On Friday, financials are going to start reporting, are going to be the first companies to report. And also keep in mind that October, historically, is the most volatile month of the year. So keep that in mind. And we already started with, uh, 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 we already started with two, uh, two extreme volatile days. Uh, and that it, for Thursday and Friday, revisiting this 20 SMA. So um, when we move to the one hour chart, let's take a look at some uh, quick actionable ideas. Uh, the price on Friday came right into resistance at the 26,500. A lot of resistance into this point. If the price is going to manage to escape through this resistance, any pop to the upside into the 550, pull back into the 500 may, may be seen as viable. So far, we're getting a little bit of extension now. So the upside is going to have an increased risk uh, of 26,300. So uh, pretty much we have to wait for... Uh, the price to stabilize, get a little pop higher. And again, the first area of resistance is going to be 550 and a pullback and uh, a, a rotation off the 500. This is where we're going to be looking for another leg up all the way back into the high 550, back into the 600 and possibly back into this 200 SMA into the 620s. Obviously, the more clear picture is going to come in after uh, the Dow will break above this 200 moving average uh, on the one hour chart and starts rotating and building up, uh, trying to erase some of the losses that it had uh, it had made on Thursday and Friday. So uh, as long as we're trading within uh, this range and this is pretty much Friday's range, which is very wild. 
uh, for a high of 735 and a low of 310. Uh, so we're going to be looking for a break to the upside, but this is going to be the first step uh, for those of you that are trading the overnight trading session. Look for the price to break higher into the 26,550 and let it pull back into the 500 and then take that reversal higher back into the 50, back into uh, 600 target. And then here the price is going to have to prove itself uh, whether it wants to push higher or lower. So I would... Uh, I would love to see a digestion day in the market. A digestion day in the market would tighten the ranges so we won't have to deal with quite so, such wide ranges of 300 points or 200 points or so. Uh, that's going to bring the volatility a bit a bit down and we're going to possibly have some really good swings, uh, uh, price swings on our hands. Uh, obviously, tons of support here from prior price action. You can see that last Thursday and Friday. So we're not really down that big because we still have support from last week. So we basically raced one uh, one week of trading session. Another way of looking at this chart is seeing um, uh, act actually seeing a head and shoulders pattern uh, with this being the head the right shoulder and the left shoulder right here. So this would be the neckline into the 550. So that's one of the that's one of the other reasons why I'm looking at the uh, 550 as being that line in the sand. If we break above the 550, then uh, most likely uh, the price may push to the other side. Charts are a little bit complicated this uh, to start the week. Let's hope that they're gonna clear the way. Then uh, the ranges are gonna. Uh, um, uh, are, are going to become a little bit more tighter uh, because what we see right here is very, very sloppy trading and very, very, um, um, you know, for day trading purposes. It's more like a scalp territory than anything else. All right. And uh, and all these scalps, and I want to highlight something, uh, you know, when we have these volatile moves, uh, stick to a very firm bias. Obviously, we're into a very strong uptrend. And after two massive selling days uh, where you had really wide swings pretty much from 700 to 300, uh, and then again from uh, almost 27,000 uh, 27, uh, all the way here um, uh, into these lows when, when we... Uh, uh, when we opened on uh, on Thursday, uh, uh, seven seven twenty eight. So we you can see that we have really really wide ranges that we need to deal with, and sometimes we will have to uh, take uh, two or three trades in your initial direction before uh, before you give up on your directional bias. But I think that uh, for today and the way the charts are setting up right now, you need to have a little bit more confirmation. Let the price resolve this area, digest this area a little bit before we take our decisions. And uh, we actually saw a really nice reversal on the one-hour chart, and this was on uh, this was on Friday. So after a hard, hard, hard sell, the one-hour chart was one, and in fact, the thirty-minute chart and the one-hour chart were the ones that executed the uh, higher odds reversal. So navigate a little bit more from smaller time frames to higher time frames uh, in, until this volatility subsides a little bit uh let's move on to the mini smp and we're going to begin with the weekly chart uh the weekly chart is revisiting not only the 10 ema uh, but it's revisiting and it's finding support at this prior pivot high so from my perspective uh and from what, what i'm looking at the charts I think that we should still be bullish because we're just revisiting some very substantial support levels, uh, especially on the weekly chart. So uh, we're I'm tempted to be 85 to 90 percent more bullish on this pullback than anything else, just because of these weekly support levels. 2880 is the new support level on the weekly chart. Let's zoom into the daily chart. Daily chart revisit into the 50 SMA. Double bottom uh, from last week's low uh, and uh, and also sept beginning of September. I'm sorry, beginning of September low. And we have the really nice potential of a reversal. Obviously, if the price is going to peak above the 20 period uh, moving average, the 29, uh, 29.16 to 29.20, I would be more aggressively bullish at that point. 
Uh, but don't forget that exactly at the trigger point, we do have resistance from this prior pivot high exactly into the 20 zone. So things are going to be a little bit more complicated. Let's move on to the 60 minute chart for some more uh, for actionable ideas, in fact. OK, here we go. And uh, uh, we do have a lot of cluster resistance into the 40s. Price got rejected and it landed into the same uh, support level into the 2908, 29.10 zone. The price got rejected again here and had followed through to the downside back into that major, uh, uh, that minor support level from the weekly chart, which is a, a very substantial uh, projecting a lot of support for price. So what that means that 2880 is going to be seen as the line in the sand. Anything below 2880 is going to project the price lower and the next target area is going to be into the 28, uh, 2865. Uh, 2850 and perhaps even lower into the uh, 2830 and 2825. But let's uh, look at what we have to deal with right now into the open. So we don't have much long into the open, about two, two and a half hours to the open. So we had a really nice reversal on Friday towards the end of uh, the day uh, where the price has recouped quite a bit from that uh, from that fall. I would say about 50% retracement from that uh, from that New York trading session high. Uh, tangled into the 10 exponential moving average, came up with a vengeance and uh, ended the day on a high note. Uh, now we're going to have to see if what well, this move is going to be continued into the 2900. 2900 again resistance and uh, we're going to have to wait for a turnaround at this point for higher. Very problematic charts as the 2900 has a lot of resistance. So if we don't see a turnaround at 2900 and we see a break of 2900 and we may continue higher into the 2908 to 2910. I would like to see this pr the, the price erase this area before it becomes bullish obviously uh as for the mini dow uh i i guess that uh, you know scalping is going to be uh you know for for us in the trading room is going to be uh what we're going to be looking for at least in the first uh in the first hour in the morning uh nasdaq uh nasdaq let's begin with uh the weekly charts weekly chart visit right into uh the 20 sma uh, and as you can see, right mid cluster right here. So it's really in a very good position for a bounce. And we actually saw a really nice zip up of the price right here. Let's see the daily chart. Daily chart breached the 50 moving average and also first layer of support into the 7388. And it landed very close into the 7340 from these prior lows right here before this rotation happened. So right now we have the one, two, three, four bars down from the daily chart. So I would say that if we get a push over 50, 7550 is going to be the line in the sand. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we're going to get a push higher. So this is uh, this is the bull line for NASDAQ. And some of the NASDAQ stocks are still very strong, like Apple and um, Microsoft, etc. So uh, they're, they're, they still look positive. Uh, bull sandwich over 74.50 may push the price higher back into the 7,500 and uh, back into the 75.50. So 74.50 to 75.50, this is going to be the problem area. Scalping up into this target is an option. If the price is going to get rejected into the 74.70 zone, the price may try to come in even more and retest the prior lows. And there is another support level at the 73.18 zone. So uh, again, we're going to go for small moves going into Monday. Uh, also, let's continue with RTY. RTY is very interesting to me because, um, well, RTY for once was one of the weakest indices. And in fact, it has been our gauge since February. So February, March, April, all through October, uh, the market has been really uh, uh, coordinated with Russell. So if Russell was uh, the one that was leading soon enough, uh, the rest of the e mini indices started to follow through. Uh, and uh, Russell has uh, shown signs of weakness since creating this high of the 17, uh, 1746.3. And it has been coming in. It has been rejecting this 1700 level, has been trying to deal a lot with this 17. 
uh, hundred level and finally it collapsed uh, and it uh, actually moved to the downside now what is very interesting is that when you look on the daily chart okay we had the the, the visit on the 200 simple moving average all right we had another visit off the 200 simple moving average right here into the um into the 1485 to 15 uh, 1500 zone from where we have rotated uh rotated back in april so really nice projection to the upside so every single time russell has tapped onto the uh, 20 sma throughout this year it has bounced so i see this as a bounce area for russell i will also keep an eye on the iwm for a potential long going into uh going into option expiration and uh, 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 a reversal over 1660 may push the price higher. So this is going to be the line in the sand. If the price is going to get rejected into the 1660s, don't, it's going to come back down. So 1660 is going to be seen as that line in the sand. But before that, it needs to tackle one more obstacle, and that is the 1650. Okay, the 1650 is a big barrier for price, 1650 and 1660 is right here. So it needs to work its way up and digest this uh, through this 10 points. And 1660 is gonna be the bullish zone. Any reversals over the 1660 are gonna project the price higher. And I think it's gonna run for at least 20 points back into the 1680. And then it's gonna have like 10 point increments to the upside into the 1690s, uh, 1700, 1710. This is the way the uh, support resistance areas are laid out onto the one hour and onto the daily chart. So first off, we need to achieve that 1650. Let the price grind into that uh, into that location. Also, we have a bull sandwich uh, at the 16 uh, 1640 from uh, that 180 uh, reversal, 180 rotation from. Uh, the one hour that uh, started um, on Friday at one o'clock. So let the price go into the 50 and let's watch and see what it does between 50 and 60 here. It's gonna be very interesting. So nonetheless, to, in, in my perspective, I see that the every single time the Russell on the daily chart has, uh, throughout this year has bounced off that 200 SMA. So I think this may also be a, a buy opportunity for Russell and it's going, uh, we're also going to focus on some uh, on some small cap stocks for throughout this week. All right, so that is uh, this is Russell. We're also going to take a look at oil, and I'm going to start with the weekly chart. Weekly charts, okay, not the monthly, but the weekly. Here we go. All right, weekly chart. You could see here a bottom, a, a topping tail, making a high into the 76.90. It also landing in one of the projection areas that we had uh, very close to the $77 zone and the price did not stabilize at the $75.50, which was a big deal because it was a major uh, support level that should have rotated off of this level, but definitely very extended. We had one, two, three, four weeks uh, to the upside, so the whole entire September and the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, September we were uh, trading higher in October. If we break below $73, we may see some lower prices back into the 7050. Let's see what we have in store on the daily chart. One, two bar pull back into the 10 EMA into this cluster right here. So if the price is going to break over, and this is for you guys that are trading the overnight trading session, if the price is going to break over $75.27, uh, the price may accelerate higher back at least into the 76, uh, 25, 76, 30, and it's going to probably have a shot into the 7650 zone. If the price is going to break below $73.70, we may have room to continue to the downside. It's not going to be an easy slide because we do have resistance from a confluence zone here at $73 and room to accelerate if that should be breached into the $71.80. 
All right, uh, some quick actionable ideas from the one hour chart. Obviously, over $75.10, 75, 75 to 75.10. This is uh, this can be a reversal back to the upside. We need to die just above this 50 SMA, but it may be ready uh, to go higher on a break over 75. Let's take a look at the four hour chart. So, the four hour chart, we pretty much have this pin on the 50 SMA. So this is the area that I'm looking for a break over this cluster high of $75, over $75, small turbulence into the 75.25, which is gonna be one of the first targets. And if we break above that area, we're gonna go higher into the $76, 76.50 or so. Uh, as long as the price is trading within this prior four hour range, I wouldn't attempt to do anything. But if we break $74, obviously we may have a pinch to the downside. Uh, and like I said, the targeted areas that I'm going to be looking for are going to be $72.80. Let's take a look at gold. Uh, gold is uh, actually very perky and uh, I'm going to start with the weekly chart. Weekly chart, this week we've traded above last week's high we're really trying to pierce through this 10 EMA. Not only that, where we're trying to pierce from this uh, pierce into this prior resistance zone that is derived from this prior pivot low. Uh, this is kind of interesting here because we're trying to have the bottoming effect. What this means is that we have our low set up and if we manage to do this 180 reversal here over uh, 1210, we have our set, uh, our uh, actually first, a higher low from this prior pivoting area that may create price acceleration all the way into the 1220 zone. So that's a good first target. All right, let's move on to the daily chart. Daily chart, any race, uh, any of uh, the price may erase the 1210 zone. Uh, and if it will erase that area, this can be a good buy into um, the 1210 zone. Uh, and we have tried for the last three days, uh, Thursday, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we have tried to hold into this key 1200 zone. In fact, we have a low of 1199.4. This is going to act as the new support level for price. So uh, moving to the one hour chart, this is what we see. So we see a range. You can see the support right here. Uh, into the 1199 from this prior pivot low. We also have support from these prior lows uh, before we hit the bottom uh, and we established a new bottom into 1184 here. But, uh, and this was this, th this is the higher low that we spoke about on the daily chart and on the weekly chart. So right now we're stabilizing a little bit higher. For those of you that are looking for patterns, this may be an inverse head and shoulders, this being the head right here. Uh, this being the right shoulder and the left shoulder, shoulder, <laughs> this should, uh, this can be the, uh, this can be the neckline. So a break over twelve ten may create some more buying pressure that can uh, um, move the price higher into the twelve twenty zone, twelve twenty five, twelve thirty, and even twelve thirty five. So it has a really nice potential for a run up uh, into the two hundred SMA on the weekly chart, which is into the twelve thirty five zone. Uh, the risk is going to be a little bit increased here, but on the first break uh, into the 1250 zone, this uh, pullback here may provide us support, so we may lock in the trade at break even. So this is really nice. It has a higher risk a little bit here, uh, 11.99 for the stop, 12.10 for the entry, and once it gets into the 1215 zone, I would lock in break even in uh, in gold. Uh, Let's continue with uh, heating oil, and uh, we're going to go through some commodities here. We're going to begin uh, with the weekly charts, and let me just erase these alerts that we've had. Uh, as you can see, heating oil has the pretty uh, has the same pattern as oil. So we have a topping tail right here, sort of like a hammer. Uh, so we're we're pretty much entering into the stall phase and I think that we may not push into uh, these oil stocks for this week. I think they might may take a break uh, and digest these highs right uh, right now. So if we trade, as you can see, we pretty much closed at the 2.3889. 
But if we break below this low of 2.3414, we may have a, a more of a pull in into the uh, 2.27 area. So not ready yet for uh, for a trade just yet. Uh, also pull back right here, one, two bars from the high in the middle of nowhere, still uh, trading into a lot of air. We still have the 10 EMA at the 2.36, still not ready yet. Uh, the one hour is curling down a little bit. We have the 200 SMA here, which is a confluence zone at 2.3667. Um, the trade is not ready yet. And if you can see, we have the same, uh, the same kind of pattern, the head and shoulders. So we have the uh, head here, right shoulder, left shoulder right here. So this would be the neckline into the uh, 2.3830. Uh, so any break of this uh, neckline will bring the price a little bit lower here. All right, let's take a look at our Bob and uh, our Bob onto. Let's uh, start with the weekly charts. All right, here we go. Weekly chart thin indecision bar, actually a little bit weaker than heating oil and oil altogether, but sitting on the 20 simple moving average. If we break below this 20 simple moving average, I think that we may still come in way more back into the $2 zone. The hourly chart, a little bit choppy. So from this high that was established uh, this week, we are starting to roll a little bit to the downside. We are trading above, below the uh, 20 sim uh, 200 simple moving average. Any uh, 180 rotation over this area, over the 210 and back into the 212, this eraser right here, this price, if the price is going to erase these highs right now uh, in, in the upcoming days, uh, the price may move back to the upside. All right, uh, let's take a look at copper HG. We have some, we had some selling in copper on Thursday and Friday. Let's begin with the weekly chart. The weekly chart is into a sell pattern. I think that it is into a sell pattern, but it's also onto uh the 10 ema as if the price is going to remain between 275 and this high of 286 we may move a little bit higher okay we may move a little bit higher and the daily chart suggests that if we move above this high of 279 uh 279 40 45 i would say we have a good shot of con of a continuation higher back into the 284 or so all right, uh, natural gas, uh, let's begin with the weekly chart. Okay, there we go. Uh, natural gas had a really nice rally into resistance, uh, 2.25, it rallied into the 2.3, I'm sorry, 3.266. Uh, and right now it's still holding um, uh, support level of 310. As long as the price is gonna remain stable into the 310 zone, uh, this is going to be bullish, possibly projection back into the upside. And same goes for the daily chart. As you can see here, pull back into the support zone. We're going to have to wait and see how the support zone is behaving. I agree there's a lot of resistance into the 325s, but we, we just have to see. Uh, we just have to have more information on this pattern. Last but not least, the bonds, and this is the 30-year bond. Uh, we had the breakout. We have been discussing this breakdown for quite some time. And as you could see, this year was pretty much a steep downtrend. The price tried to stabilize for like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months before we had the breakdown lower below 140. We often talked about this in the trading room. Uh, a break below 140 is going to bring targets of uh, uh, 137 and 136. Uh, we have seen these targets achieve. Uh, we're into some minor support level uh, from these prior pivot highs from the uh, from the weekly charts, but being such a, a trouble pattern and being such a, a you know kind of like a downtrend uh, sort of pattern, uh, we may still see lower prices in in the bonds. And uh, the next target area that I see achieve is going to be uh, one thirty five thirty one. And that is uh, 135.31 for possibly in this week or in the next couple of weeks or so. All right, let's move on to the daily chart acceleration to uh, to the downside. Any break to the upside into the 139 or 139 or even 138 uh, area and a rotation, the price rejection at that point 
may take the price back lower again. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you all have a fantastic week. Uh, remember, October, still a very volatile week. We begin earnings season on Friday uh, with some uh, major financial uh, companies that are going to report. So uh, enjoy your trading week and have a profitable one. Do your work. And I'll see you in the trading room on Monday at 9 a.m.